Catherine the Great arrived in Russia in 1744 as Princess Sophia of Anhalt Zerbst. She was a minor German princess, plucked from obscurity thanks to her dead uncle, who had been betrothed to Empress Elizabeth of Russia. Because of Elizabeth's fondness for her dead fiancé, she had selected Sophia as a bride for her nephew and heir, Grand Duke Peter. But once married to Peter and converted to Orthodoxy, Sophia, now rebaptized as Catherine, found life in Russia more Hobbesian than she would have liked. Solitary, nasty, and brutish. These early years shaped her understanding of power, relationship dynamics, and self-worth. Later, at three different periods in her life, she looked back and wrote about these years, explaining how they shaped her destiny as the future ruler of Russia. The last version, written a few years before her death, is what historians usually refer to when they mention Catherine's memoir. It contains the most detail about her time as Grand Duchess, prior to usurping her husband's throne in 1762. Today, that memoir is surprisingly readable. It contains funny anecdotes about court life, pranks, mishaps, jokes, and the occasional home remedy for common ailments, which I find hilarious and charming. Let's take a look at two of them. In December of 1748, the Russian court left St. Petersburg to spend Christmas in Moscow. When they arrived, Catherine wrote that it was 28 or 29 degrees below zero, and Empress Elizabeth excused her from going to church because of the excessive cold. While bundled up inside, Catherine reminisced about her first visit to Moscow four years earlier. Quote, I was obliged to remain in my room during my first stay in Moscow because of the excessive number of pimples that had broken out on my face. I was scared to death of being scarred. End quote. So she sent for Dr. Borhave, who gave her all kinds of potions, none of which worked. The doctor took pity on Catherine and said, quote, I'm going to give you something that will really get rid of them." End quote. What was this magic solution? Oil of talc. He told her to put a drop in a cup of water and wash her face with it once a week. Ten days later, Catherine's zits were gone and she could appear in public once more. I had no idea what oil of talc was, so I went digging. It's referenced by the 17th century English poet Ben Jonson in the poem titled To Sickness. In that poem, he bemoans the fact that illness seems to take the best women instead of those who do nothing but spend their husband's money on crappy cosmetic and wellness procedures. Bear with me here, and I'll read you that part of the poem. Hang on, I need a bit of wine to do this properly. There are women, quote, that distill their husband's land in decoctions, and are manned with ten empirics in their chamber, lying for the spirit of amber. That for the oil of talc dare spend more than citizens dare lend them, and all their officers. End quote. Okay, that was kind of cool. This might be the first and only time being an English major and having briefly studied 17th century English poetry has come in handy. Ben Jonson also references oil of talc in his play, The Alchemist. Quote, A lady that is past the feet of body, though not of mind, and hath her face decayed beyond all cure of paintings, you restore with the oil of talc. End quote. Then I found an oil of talc recipe in an 1833 pharmaceutical supply book. The author, James Rennie, notes that, quote, The ancients bestowed high encomiums on water or oil of talc as a cosmetic, end quote. But then he also added, quote, We know not in what manner they composed it, end quote. Okay, so he couldn't give us a historically accurate recipe but he did give us the 19th century recipe. It was composed like this. Take one part Venetian talc and two parts calcined borax. Pulverize and blend them, put them in a covered, heat-proof container, and set it over the fire. Heat it for an hour until you get a mixture 
that looks like greenish yellow glass. Grind it back into powder, then mix with two parts of carbonate of potass, then melt it all again over the fire. Drain the resulting lump, and that liquid runoff is oil of talc. Okay, great. So now we know how to make it. But what the heck is that first ingredient, Venetian talc? Turns out, it's a pearly green mineral embedded in serpentine found in the Austrian Alps. Later, it would also be discovered in Vermont. The second ingredient, calcined borax, is found in Ayurvedic medicine. The third ingredient, potassium carbonate, is a white salt that's one of the drying agents used to make soap. My guess? Oil of talc was probably intended to help mop up excess facial oil that can cause breakouts, and maybe counteract the redness or scarring. But it seems unlikely that Catherine's prescription, one drop, once a week, was going to help much. I suspect that within 10 days, Catherine's breakout ran its course and cleared up naturally. In June of 1749, Empress Elizabeth commanded Catherine to join her in the country. But Catherine had already spent most of the spring and early summer riding outside, so she looked a little worse for wear. The Empress was horrified by what too much sun had done to her skin. She sent Catherine a potion designed to help. Indeed, Catherine wrote in her memoir, she immediately sent me a vial with a liquid composed of lemon, egg white, and eau de vie from France. Her ladies whipped up more of the concoction as needed, and Catherine reports that her sunburn disappeared within a few days. She became such a fan that she recommended the same fix for anyone else with red, chapped, or sunburned skin. When the skin is heated, I know of no better remedy, she wrote. She reports that it also works on, quote, an inflammation that makes the skin crack, end quote. Based on the German word she used for this condition, the editors of my edition of her memoirs have translated this as herpes, or as we would call it, a cold sore. So are you ready to make your own? It's easy to get lemon and egg white, but what's eau de vie? Eau de vie, or water of life in French, is a clear fruit brandy from the Alsace region of France. I like the sound of that, because if your skin doesn't look sufficiently refreshed, you can console yourself with a tipple. To see my list of sources, check the video description. I did my best with any foreign pronunciations in this video, and I apologize if I got something terribly wrong. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment, like, or subscribe. You can also find more stories about fascinating royal women at my website, girlinthetiara.com. Thanks so much for watching! Until next time! No, seriously, thanks for bearing with me through the Ben Johnson recital. That was surprisingly fun, and because I needed a little wine to work up the courage, I'm now halfway drunk. So thank you, and cheers. Until next time! <laughs>